Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. We're obviously not in front of the whiteboard today. I'm here with my good friend, Malik. What's going on, guys? Uh, so you guys, I actually asked the poll uh, if you guys would be interested in me interviewing my buddy who owns an ATM business, and that's who this buddy is. Uh, there was an overwhelmingly positive response. I think 90% of people wanted to learn more about the ATM business. Um, I think a lot of that comes down to the the uh, quote unquote sexiness of passive income. So we're gonna set the record straight here today. We're gonna do a little ride along. We're gonna um, have Malik tell you about how he got started. He's gonna answer some questions that you asked me on Instagram. And we're also gonna load up an ATM today as well, correct? Correct. Okay, perfect. So right now we're just driving to the next location. Um, and while we're driving, just uh, let us know how you got started, how many you own today, and uh, maybe just the day in the life of an ATM owner. Perfect. All right, so I got started, luckily for me, my dad actually owned a gas station and he had an ATM in that location already that was being serviced. So naturally, um, my brother and I, we started asking questions, researching. We would see this guy come to fill it up once every few weeks, he'd have a security guard with him. And you know, we just learned how it all worked and uh, eventually took over the account once the contract was up with that guy. And it was our first ATM and it was a good just tester because it was in our father's location. And that's how we got started, essentially. Now I'm on my own. My brother moved, so you know we ended up. I ended up buying him out, um, and now I'm doing it myself. But that is how I got started. Nice. How many do you own today? Today I own six ATMs. Okay. Um, they're at various locations. I have a few gas stations, convenience stores. I actually just recently got a golf course, which Marco was just with me at. We came from there and uh, filled that ATM up. And then I have a, an adult video store as well. So th those are the different um, locations that I have at the moment. Nice. Uh, so I'm going to start asking questions just from Instagram. Um, I do want to go through pros and cons and things like that as well. But I think it's important to, that you guys ask these questions. I want to get them answered. Um, so Mr. JD asks, why did he choose an ATM and not something else mildly passive like a vending machine? Like I said, it was more convenient for me because my father owned a business that had an ATM in it. So it was just, you know, it was there, it was in front of me. I saw the guy servicing it every few weeks. And when I did the research, it was just a, seemed like a really attractive business. Um, it kind of is a vending machine. Though, it, right? it is a vending machine, except instead of giving out snacks or toys, um, basically giving out money. So the inventory in this case is the cash, your cash. Got it. So how are you compensated for people that don't know? So the way I'm compensated is once I have a location and an ATM set up, um, I negotiate uh, with the store owner because you know you got to give them incentives to get into their businesses and take up a small, small space. Um, you negotiate the price, you know, of what percentage they're going to get. But essentially, I'm charging a surcharge per transaction. So just to simplify it, I have a location set up, someone goes and pulls $20 out. Um, I would essentially make $2, anywhere from two to $3 off that transaction, whether they're pulling $20, $100, $200, um, you know, I'm making that set fee per transaction. Got it. So they're basically paying you two to three dollars to take out your money. For exactly. The the cash. Exactly. Um, so how do some of those contracts work with those business owners? So say I own the convenience store, I have no ATM. How would you approach me? If I were to walk into a convenience store or gas station and I thought it was lo a good location and I noticed there wasn't an ATM, I mean, I'd start off by just asking if they've ever considered putting an ATM in. In a lot of cases, they have thought about it. And I think a lot of store owners' biggest concerns are safety issues. Am I gonna get robbed now because there's an ATM in there? And my response to them is, you know, it's my, at the end of the day, it's my cash that's in there. It's, I'm paying for the ATM, you know, there's the potential that someone might break in and steal it, but uh, it's gonna be, you know, my cash, my ATM very little risk to the owner. On top of that, all my ATMs are bolted down. They all have, you know, um, security cameras on it. it. They're not easy. I mean, there's, you know, rare cases where ATMs are actually stolen out of the stores. And a lot of times it's because those ATMs weren't bolted down at the, uh, to the ground. So, so how would you uh, approach me from a business standpoint? Like, from a business I, standpoint, would I, have your ATM in my I would, I would be like, listen, 
there's a great potential as a store owner with ATMs, whether you want someone else to service it or whether you want to service it yourself, you're giving a, you're giving your customers uh, easy access to cash and you know any customer would appreciate it. There's always gonna be a time where someone might not have their credit card with them or just wanna have cash on them to go do whatever and it could potentially bring in more traffic into your business. The second thing is you have the potential for income. Like I said, I, I split a percentage of my fee with a lot of um, the store owners that I set up my ATMs at. So they're not doing anything. I'm doing everything. I'm filling it, um, I'm servicing the ATM, I'm fixing the ATM when need be. So for them, it's truly passive income um, to have an ATM, especially when someone else is servicing it. Got it. Um, Baker Jr. asks, what is your ROI and in initial investment amount? So you don't have to give specifics, but like, I guess, how much would an ATM typically cost? You know, how much are you putting, how much money are you putting into these things? I guess, what's your cash outlay to start? Cash outlay for one, it varies by location. So let me let me just give an example of numbers. So specifically with my ATMs, some of my higher ones make me in the like, you know, a few thousand a month and some of the lower end ones make me as little as like a hundred or less a month. The medium, mediocre ones on average do a few hundred a month. Got it. With that being said and location having a big factor on average just using like you know average figures in atm you have two options you could get a, a single cassette or a double cassette and i there might i might be mistaken but there might be atms where they offer three cassettes when i say cassettes i mean a multiple cassette atm gives diff, more denominations of money so instead of just dishing out 20s you have the option to pull 10s or fives a single cassette usually for most cases is just dishing out $20 bills. Um, so as far as return on investment, you, an ATM that's a single cassette would be a lower end could cost anywhere from two to $3,000 brand new. You could find used ones as well. And those would cost a little less, maybe 1500 or so, but I would always recommend to get a brand new one and just have that peace of mind that, you have a brand new piece of equipment. Um, the higher end ones, the ones that have multiple cassettes could cost anywhere from three to 5,000, three to $6,000. So initial investment, say we just, say we're buying a single cassette ATM at a location, say you have a buddy that owns a bar or whatever, a small convenience store, and he asks you to put an ATM in, you buy the ATM, let's say average, you buy it for $2,500, a single cassette. On top of that, you got to think you need to supply it with cash. The inventory is the cash. So it, the, think of it like this, the less cash you put in, the more often you have to go to that store to fill it up. So the cassettes hold so much money. I always recommend filling them up to the max and that just limits the amount of times you have to go service the ATM and refill it. You know, you could go weeks, months without having to go back to that location. Um, let's say you want to fill it up once a week for that location, an average location that's making you a couple hundred dollars a month. Let's just say you put anywhere two to $4,000. So total investment, I would say for one location is anywhere from like seven to $10,000 to purchase the ATM and to put some cash in it to have it able to get through a week or two without you having to go back. Now, again, you could put less cash. You could go in and put like $500 in or a hundred dollars in or whatever, but you're going to literally be going every day to refill it. But if you're, you know, you're short on cash flow, you could do that, but that would make it to where it's not worth it. In my opinion, it'd become a headache. It'd be more of a hassle than, you know, a good side income yeah, money maker. You drive there, you got to spend gas, all right. that stuff. So my good locations, I've gotten my money back in less than a year as far as, uh, you know, return on investment. Nice. And with the worst locations, the worst case has been like a year, year and a half for me. So the return on investment is quick and it's good. But again, the key is picking the right locations. Got it. Okay. So in terms of like processing and all that stuff, like how, how is the money getting to your account? So I go there, I swipe my debit card, I pay your transaction fee of like two to three bucks. How are you getting paid? So just given that example, say you go use one of my ATMs and you pull out $20.
my processor is processing the transaction and essentially right when you pull that $20 out, my business account is getting credited the $20 and then on top of that, the two to $3 surcharge. I say two to three, because in the area I'm in, I mean, Ohio in general, that's the average you'll see at ATM locations, two to $3. Again, unless you're in a casino or maybe a strip club where you know they tend to charge a lot more per transaction. Got it, interesting. So what about like some of the pros and cons in terms of like, you know, hey, this could be a semi-passive investment, but I may risk getting robbed or I mean, like, I don't know, you're, you're in the business. Right, and I'm glad you asked that. There, there's definitely the pros and there's definitely the cons. The pros is the potential for that extra side income. I still work a full-time job. I only have the six ATMs. I work full-time as a CPA. I do this once every few weeks. Um, it's good extra money. That's definitely one of the pros, especially if you're picking the right locations. And um, I could get in a little more too about how to pick the right locations, but uh, that's a pro. Another pro is it's not that expensive. The ATMs themselves aren't that expensive to buy, as I mentioned earlier and whatever the price is. And even though you're filling it up with cash, your cash, that's the inventory. Like I said, if you don't have that much to start off with, put less money in. You would just have to go more often until you were able to build up more cash to fill it up more to go less often. Got it. What are some cons to the business? Another, um, well, just to finish off with the pros, oh, sorry. sorry about that, no, no, uh, is the sense that it's passive to an extent. And like you said, I'm, I fill them up enough to get through at least, you know, a week or two. So I, once I fill them up, I have that week where I'm working, you know, at my job and I know these ATMs are making me money or while I'm at home sleeping, if the business is still open, I know I'm making money. So it's passive in that sense. So that's another, there, there's not so much uh, work involved and it, you know, it's in my opinion, semi-passive to that extent. So some of the cons are safety issues. I'm riding around with a lot of cash. Uh, once you've been to these locations so many times, you know, there's a the potential of people being like, okay, that's the guy that does the ATMs. You know what I mean? So that's a con, but there's ways to, you know, protect yourself. You could get your cash insured. Uh, me, in my case, my insurance is Smith & Wesson. So, you know, I obviously carry to protect myself and you always have that option. Another option, as I mentioned earlier, is bolting down the machines at the locations so i mean no one's able to just like come jack your stuff yeah got it uh, are you installing these yourself are you paying someone my processor usually programs on them but i install them myself so uh I'll, I'll drill the holes i'll bolt down the atm and set it up it's just being delivered to me and they're not hard to install at all uh going continuing with the cons though another con would be maintenance Sometimes bills get jammed up and you have to go, and if you're not able to or familiar with the machine yourself, you'd have to hire, either hire someone to come clear out the jam or fix mechanically the issue with the ATM. I've been doing it long enough where 90% of the stuff I know how to do myself, but worst case, your processor will always have someone to send out for you. Um, and another way to like prevent jam ups in your ATM, especially if you have new ATMs, you shouldn't really have jam ups. But what I do personally, and I know a lot of people that do ATMs don't do this because they just don't have the time, but I make the time to go through all the bills. I take out any with big tears, anything with tape on it. Um, Mark, I don't know if you want to pull out. I actually brought a bad bill to give an example, but to prevent, um, any jams and stuff. You just want to make sure all the bills are fresh. So this is an, is an example of, in my opinion, a tear that's a little too big. I'm sure it would be okay in the ATM, but I just, to prevent any jam ups, if I'm working my full-time job and I'm, I'm in the middle of work and I get a call from the store owner that the ATM's not working and it's jammed up, I don't have the, that time to go right away. I'd have to wait till I got off of work. So that's why I personally go through all the bills. I take out bills like this, bills with tape on it, bills that are just beat up in general. That way I have the peace of mind knowing that my ATMs aren't gonna get jammed up. I'm not gonna have to waste time leaving work or missing out on transactions because the ATM's out of service. Got it, so it's like a little bit of preventative maintenance. Absolutely. a lot of headaches. Absolutely. Got it, cool. Okay, so a lot of people on Instagram are asking me, you know, can these things be hacked? You know, can they be broken into? Um, have you dealt with any of that? I've never been hacked. I've never dealt with any of that. They can't be broken into as far as at the physical location. All the stores I'm at, like I said, I'm bolted down. I mean, they could try to yank it out. It's not gonna happen. Uh, 
there, there's GPS that I've set up on my ATM specifically. So if they did get stolen, I mean, they would get caught right away. Not only that, the ATM itself, it's like a mini safe. So like everything that's involved below is, I mean, extremely difficult to even penetrate or get into. So if you went to an ATM at a store and you were trying to break into it, I mean, the cops would be there way before you figured out how to get that thing open. Got it. So um, thank you for all that. That was excellent. Uh, we're actually almost at the location. Uh, what are you going to be showing us when we get to the ATM? So at the location, I'm going to kind of show you guys more of the mechanics where like just how everything works with the ATM, where you put the receipt paper, where you put the cash, um, kind of just basics of how the ATM works. Perfect. All right. We'll see you in a little bit, guys. Thanks for uh, sticking, sticking around this long. As I promised, we're going to kind of show you the ATM, the mechanics of it and how it all works. So this ATM itself, it's a Gen Mega. It's a single cassette ATM. So I already got it opened up. That's the keypad initially. So initially it's locked. You put in the code, the combination, um, and then that unlocks it. And then you have the inside. Like I said, this is a single cassette ATM. Single cassette. This is the cassette. This is the box that the money goes into. This particular ATM spits out denominations of 20s. So that's all it has. If you have a double cassette, like I mentioned earlier, the more expensive ones, and some of my, my locations do have them, but I usually save them for like higher transaction locations. Those would have a second cassette set up like this, either below or above, and it'd be a different denomination. So it'd be like, this spits out 20s. I'd, my double cassettes usually do 20s and 10s or 20s and 5s. So this slides out, you open it up, um, fill it up with the money, slide it back in. This right here is the reject bin inside the ATM. So what happens is, I mentioned to prevent jam ups in the machine, I usually go through the bills, get rid of the tears, the ones with tape on it. If I do miss one, and occasionally I do, sometimes I don't have the time to go through them, usually the machine will spit out any bad bills into this reject bin, even fake bills, if fake bills ended up being in there somehow. And that's usually where they go if they don't, you know, um, get jammed up. And usually they wouldn't. This is a newer machine. I haven't had any jam up problems with it, but, uh, that's where the bad bill should go, um, assuming it doesn't get jammed up. So that's the inside of the ATM. As you can see, it's bolted down to the ground. You can see the four bolts and screws in there. This is where the cash gets dispensed out of. So this is where the money ends up coming, being spit out of. Nice. So how do you actually like, uh... I noticed you talked about bill count and stuff like that. Is there a code to access this or do you need a physical key? Right, so let me sign on real quick. I'm gonna just cover it up just cause I got to put in the code and yeah. then I'll show you guys kind of where you go and kind of like just get, get a feel for the uh, navigation of it. Yeah. All right. So right now we are in the um, operation function um, screen and this has all your options. So this shows my bill count and it lets me keep track of how much money I've left in here. And again, this is all connected to my, the website I have through my processor where I see the real time transactions. So all the information I could get physically from this ATM, I could get online as well. But, uh, Usually when you come fill it up, you got to reset the amount so the machine knows how many bills you added so it could keep track. Um, and that's it. So in here, you'll have a settlement. That's when I'm adding cash, you know, and I would put how many bills I'm adding. Okay. Uh, you could get day totals. You could get like different journals and receipts to print out. So say a customer came and pulled twenty dollars and their account got charged and it didn't spit out the $20. I mean, that happens rarely. And a lot of times when people claim it, they're just lying and just trying to get over. But for me, it's easy to find out, you know, I could get on here, print the receipts. All they need to tell me is the time that they used it, the last four numbers of their card. And I could find out immediately if they really did get charged and it didn't spit out the money. Um, so that's, that's usually the only time I would physically come on here and pull out a journal. Most of the information I need is online and I have access from home on my computer. Um, another thing I wanted to open up and show you guys is 
where the receipt paper goes. So the top part of the ATM opens up and most ATMs are structured the same. I mean, there's different, different brands, different companies that manufacture them, but for the most part, they're all the same. You got the cassettes where you enter the cat, put in the cash on the bottom and then the receipt paper and uh, the plug-in for the powers up top. So is this connected uh, via Wi-Fi or how do these work? Like how do they talk to the processor? You have the option. You can either connect through the store. If the store has internet itself, you could just, uh, use a phone line, you know, uh, or um, what do you call those? You could just stick it in, you know, the cable and use the store's internet, or you could have a portable portable Wi-Fi. Some locations I have, I use a portable. Uh, if the store has internet itself, I just usually plug into the wall and use their internet. So we just checked out Malik's actual ATM. Uh, hopefully we didn't show any sensitive information. If you get hacked, I'm not liable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, so how do you feel about with currency going digital and people using less and less cash with like Apple Pay and Bitcoin and things like that? How do you feel about the viability of this industry in the future? You know what? I, I think there's always going to be a need for cash regardless. So like in the near future, I'm not worried, but I have thought about it, you know, cash could potentially be irrelevant at some point where everyone's just using their cards and you see that's the trend, that's where things are going. But uh, I mean, ATM manufacturers, there's new ATMs coming out. Um, there's ATMs where you could purchase Bitcoin through the ATM. There's ATMs that are coming out where you could pay your bills online. So your electric bill, all your utilities. So they're definitely, you know, the technology is increasing with these ATMs are becoming more advanced. And uh, w whether it's cash that you're pulling out or whatever, there's going to be some sort of ATM and some sort of uh, transactions that people are going to be getting charged for still with ATMs. ATMs will stay relevant, whether cash is what's being distributed. You know, that's the question. How how much longer is cash going to be relevant? Are people still going to have the need to pull out cash? Got it. So it's more of like the the product inside the ATM or what the ATM serves as opposed to just cash. So like people may go from like junk food and vending machines to like healthy snacks. Exactly. You know, and like that, that that's trending now. You know what I mean? People are putting, the, I've seen that a lot where you have those healthy vending machines. So exactly. Perfect example. Got it. So what are next moves for you in the business, man? Are you looking to grow? Are you happy with where you're at? I'm, I'm happy with the side income it's generating because like I said, I do this once every few weeks. I still have my full-time job. Would I like to get more ATMs? Of course. But like I said, it's hard to get new locations. Um, every location, there's that risk that it might not do well and you wasted your money. I've had great luck. You know, my return on investment has always been within a year or a year at the most so far with my location. So it is a lot to do with picking the right locations. But uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to continue all the free time I have, you know, I'm going to continue if I see a new store being built or a new location opened up for like a gas station, I'm going to stop in there. And if they don't have an ATM, I'm going to, you know, pitch it to them. And even if they do have an ATM, I'm still going to talk to them because there's always negotiations. The current ATM owner they have might not be paying them, uh, you know, anything or they, they might be giving them a small, you know, percentage and I could always offer more. Um, a lot of people lately to get new accounts are actually offering fees like I'll like they'll pay someone five thousand dollars to just initially get into their account. Got it. Just kind of like a, a, a franchise fee almost or like paying them as like the landlord within the space of their store. Right. Got exactly. An another thing I have an advantage like in most of my ATMs I've gotten like this aside from my dad's store. But uh there's there's people that just strictly do processing or sell ATMs and do the processing for them. They don't want anything to do with the like front end, the servicing, the filling the cash up themselves. So I was lucky enough to come across one of those companies. So when they go send their salesmen out and they go to different locations, they're usually pitching trying to sell an ATM or trying to get the store owner themselves to service an ATM themselves. And they would get their money doing the processing. Um, a lot of store owners just don't want that headache. Um, their main focus is on their brick and mortar, their business, whatever it may be. So they don't want that extra hassle of worrying about an ATM and getting robbed or whatever. So now I have this company basically throwing that out there. So when they go try pitching to a new location uh, that they come across, getting an ATM in there, if the store owner doesn't want to do it, they'll throw you know my name out there and they'll let them know that they have the option to have someone else service it. Nice. And that way everyone's happy.
Perfect. Uh, any takeaways for the viewers? I mean, thank you so much, man. This is super valuable, super real life example. No, I, I hope we covered most of your questions. I'm sorry we couldn't show everything. I mean, I, I just want to be as safe as I possibly can doing this video and keep, you know, certain things private. For sure. Um, and real quick, uh, just a fun little side note. Um, my barber sometimes is actually Malik's wife. <laughs> so as a promise to him of, you know, doing me a favor of letting me you know, get inside his business and ask him all these questions. Um, obviously, he's my friend, but also I want to give his wife a shout out. She's one of the best barbers in Cleveland. She's done my hair and I don't I don't trust just anyone with my hair. <laughs> you guys heard it. But no, for real, check out my wife, uh, Sam's Finest Fades. She's on Instagram and YouTube as Sam's Finest Fades. She's an award winning barber out in Cleveland. And uh, if you want to follow her, you can follow her on Instagram. Just check it out. If you're in the Cleveland area, definitely go try, try her out. Get cut by her. I'm sure you'll be satisfied. I'm very happy. No, Sam's awesome. Malik's awesome. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate no problem. the time, my man. Thank you, everybody. I hope you got value out of this video. And as always, have a prosperous day. Peace. Peace. Ch -ch 